seriously, we might have the best closed loop cooler right here with this Liquid Fusion 360. I still haven't determined if it's just Lick Fusion or Liqua Fusion, but I'm gonna say Liqua Fusion because it just sounds better than just licking. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here, and I am back with another CPU cooler review. And so, yeah, the Enermax Liquid Fusion 360 is designed to be pretty hardcore, high-end CPU cooling. And quite frankly, guys, it is not going to disappoint. So we're gonna get right to those testing results, but let's go ahead and cover a couple of things first. So install process is the one thing that is the black mark on this cooler. So it's not that the install process is hard, mind you, but that bracket that this particular cooler uses, it's too big and square for motherboards in general. So for instance, on my X470 Gaming 7 board from Oris, there's a back plate on there that they did to make it all fancy and cool and I love that because it actually does look really nice if you like, never look at that back plate. It does add a very big feel of quality to the board, but it gets in the way of this bracket. I can't even use this bracket. Um, so that's kind of a bummer for my particular chipset. Now I've got a workaround on there, but um, one of my other reviewers over at Hardware Hounds, he tried it out and he actually grounded out the VRMs on his motherboard. Like, he thought he blew up his system. Now, thankfully, he didn't. Everything was fine. But this bracket can actually hit the solder points on the back of your motherboard, and that's very dangerous. And I wish Enermax would just change the bracketing system somehow, if they can. But outside of that, I've got a method of how I've used, um, how I've gotten around that with the AM4 bracket by just buying some four screws at a hardware store. I'm gonna show, I'll just link that video in the description below. This is exactly the same as Liquid Fusion 240, so I'm not gonna redo that. I just wanted to reiterate that bracket problem because I do see that as a very serious issue. But it's one that if you just use some protective measures, you can get around, but you shouldn't have to do that with a CPU cooler. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and move on to some lighting effects real quick and see how this baby looks. Enermax has changed up their controller a little bit, so if you, uh, um, they've got three buttons still, but they've actually got an M on the bottom there for mode, so you actually know what mode you're going. So if you have the green light, you're going to be looking for the, you're gonna be changing the lighting effects. Red will get change the speed, blue will let you change the brightness, and then yellow just kind of does an auto run. And so as you can see, we got our nice little rainbow portion going nice and strong. And let's just take a look at how many options Enermax has got going on here. So we're gonna have a lot of different things, including different color variations here. So yeah, one of the things that Enermax always does is they put a crazy ton of lighting effects into this controller. And I mean, like the last time, we're gonna see just so many things coming and we're barely even trying. And so we already got back to the beginning, which I'm really surprised about actually, but um, still, that was a decent number of coloring effects. So yeah, very, very interesting. Also guys, take a look. So as you notice, I swapped out the fans, and I caught my finger in that fan, with the, um, they call them the Squa, I think, S-Q-A, R-G-B. I really should just, or Square G-B, I don't know. You know let's say Square G-B, because Squa just sounds weird, right? So Square G-B, <laughs> I think would be the best way to say that. And so those fans look really cool. We're gonna review those two guys, show you some color, uh, some performance there. But the review this time is gonna be just with the stock fans. So not these guys, but I just wanted you to get a chance to see these, thought they looked pretty cool. Alrighty guys, let's get into performance now because it is time. All right guys, so now we've just gotta look at those performance results and well, that's where this guy is going to shine. 
So it's one thing if you have, you know, really great cooling results, but then you had to do that through your noise levels. But as you can see, we not only have some really good cooling results, but we have some really tolerable noise levels. At 100%, we can not only see that this guy was topping the charts barely on the three other coolers with temperatures, but we can also see that with XFR2 and AMD's Ryzen, it gives us a little more frequency than the other two coolers, which I thought was really awesome. Not only shows how well XFR2 works with better cooling, but it shows that yes, a better cooler is giving you better processing results, even if they're minor. But now if we go to my CPU cooler tier list, which like I said guys, still working on that, I'm going to eventually link that in the description below. I'm trying to talk over a crying baby and I've, uh, you know what guys, sometimes babies just cry. I don't know why, but when I figure out why, I will solve baby crying for the world. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna solve that one just yet, but yeah. When we go to our tier list, we see that this guy not only was able to hit my highest level of overclocking tier, but when we get to the silent profile, it's actually able to beat out a custom loop ever so slightly just because the pump doesn't make as much noise. I had to tone the pump's noise, pump speed down, and if I hadn't had to do that, then you know the custom loop would probably still pull barely ahead. But guys, this is keeping up with a custom cooling loop. Now, if I put better rate, there's a lot of things going on there. Custom Loop is still going to ultimately beat this out. But if you're wanting really solid cooling performance, this guy is it. So now we really have to answer the question of is it worth the cost or not? On Amazon, this cooler is 150 bucks, and actually, when you compare it to other 360 closed loop coolers that have RGB lighting, it's like the, about the lowest priced one that I saw. And so that's really impressive. I don't see it on Newegg yet, but Newegg does have some options that are about $10 cheaper, but they're also not brands that are as well known as Enermax. When you're looking at a 360 millimeter closed loop cooler that has this much bling, it's actually a surprisingly good price in comparison to what else is out there. So that function is gonna be a huge deterrent on this cooler though. Oh man, I really, I really like it a lot. But we've gotta have better install. We can't have risk of grounding out or having to buy hardware screws. That really hurts the functionality. But it's got amazing, great style, and it definitely has great performance. And I'm gonna have to say it's a great value because Enermax doesn't just have a good price, it actually has amazing quality. The unit feels super solid, their fans feel great. They include a ton of accessories. So I'm not gonna be able to quite give it a must-have award, but yes, we are gonna have a great style, a great performance, and a great value on awards. So three good awards on it, still a decent CPU cooler. Just that mounting bracket holding it back, Tad. All right, guys, once again, check my links in the description below. I will have a little bit on that, have that for that install because once again, it is the same. I'm not gonna detail it out here. And of course, let me know what you think. Like and subscribe to my channel. You can hit that little notification button and yeah, let me know in the comments below what you're thinking of the reviews. I'm hoping they are helpful. Hope you guys are enjoying them. Really hoping that guys are getting some answers to the questions that you need. I will catch you later.